So um, one of the things just to be aware of is when you load your web page, and um, I'm just going to refresh it, um, it asks you to run uh, scripts. So JavaScript is a, is a script, so we have to say allow blocked content. Um, otherwise, when you click on your button, it might not actually work. So that needs to be allowed. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're basically going to take um, this very first question and we're going to get JavaScript to check uh, which option the user has picked and then we're going to say well if they've picked the correct option then just say well done in here uh, so that's all we're going to do so for the next bit you do need to have an understanding of um, variables and uh, loops really which is it, the kind of basic programming constructs so it's not you know I'm not too worried about the syntax but you do need to know what variables are and um, you know the fact that loops are used and what the syntax might be in other languages for this bit to work so I need a way of being able to refer to the text area that appears because that's where the answers are going to uh, go so that's just very simply I'm just going to give it a name and my name in uh, quotes I'm just going to call this answers so or the answers box maybe if that helps and the other thing I'm just going to do is I'm just going to name this form so I'm going to give the form also a name so in the attributes I'm just going to say name equals um, uh, I don't know quiz or something like that um, uh, okay so so we've got a way of actually referring to the form and the, the this a lot of questions and we've got a way of in our JavaScript referring to the text area where the answer is going to appear okay so we're ready to write our function here uh, so let's uh, give this function a name and again the function name can be whatever you want but uh, obviously something meaningful uh, would be would be uh, useful so I'm just going to get it just say check cues and then um, parentheses and then we've got the curly braces so the first thing that we need is to be able to get hold of these radio buttons here and these radio buttons are called um, Q1 so I'm going to create a variable which was which will hold these values and just call it cues um, doesn't really matter you can call it a longer name if you want to and the func the function that we're going to use is called document dot get elements by name now this you do actually have to write as it's written here otherwise you'll have some syntax errors and you won't know um, what those syntax errors are and the name that we want it to get is we want it to get all of the radio buttons which we have called Q1 on our um, uh, HTML document over here okay so that's that's what we're uh, going to say so QS is going to hold all of those three radio buttons for us so that's all it's doing and then just to make the loop easier I'm just going to set up another variable in fact for JavaScript you don't even need to say that it's going to be a variable but you might as well use the keyword var for variable just so you know so um, this one is going to be number of and this name can be anything you want so this is going to be number of um, radios so this is the number of radio buttons that there are and that is just going to be equal to this variable here that we've declared dot and the length of it so basically if we've, if we've got a question with three radio buttons then this will have the value three if we decide to have four radio buttons in one of our questions as an option then this will automatically become four okay and the reason we need that is we're going to uh, we're going to do a loop to basically go through each of the radio buttons and check whether that's correct so the loop syntax is very much like a C++ syntax or um, a Java syntax, um, possibly also small basic actually. 
So I've got a variable i equals zero, so I'm going to start at zero, and I want the loop to carry on all the way um, until it's gone through the number of radios, which is, so that's what I'm using here. So, and um, it's then going to go up in ones, and y it doesn't matter how you write this, i equals i, i equals i plus one, um, or you can use the kind of shorthand syntax, which, so the thing that which is short for i equals i plus one is just i plus plus. So basically this loop structure is saying, um, start at number zero, a loop through uh, the number of radios that you've got, and basically to make the loop work, just go um, to the next radio button. So that's all it's saying. And what we want it to happen while it's executing this loop is we basically want to say something like, um, if the QS, Okay, so if QS I, because basically this is, it's made this into an array now. This is this is an array of our radio buttons. So we're saying if QS I um, dot checked, which means if somebody has actually clicked that radio button, then do the following check. Okay, so we're we're going to put the following check in braces. Okay, I'm just going to stop this video here because otherwise it gets too long. Uh, so this is this is basically the structure of it. Um, so we've got a function and we're just saying, go and get all the radio buttons. Uh, tell me how many radio buttons you've got. That's what this line is doing. This one is saying, um, go through every single radio button that you've got. That's, that, that's what that does. Go through each of the radio buttons. And then this is saying, well, if you find a radio button that's checked, and then we're going to basically say, you know, do this if it's checked, or basically check whether it's the correct one, and if it is, then go and write something in there. And I, but I'll just put that bit of code in the next video.